Okay, so if you weren't able to answer question one correctly, I'm pretty sure I know what you did wrong. So let's take a look. So question one says, what is the difference between negative 3.7 and 4.9? Now, most students know this word difference here uh, means subtract. So they see that right away and they're like, oh, okay, subtract. So if you saw that, oh, that's wonderful. I agree with you. But another thing that you should know and write this down is that difference is always positive. Difference is always positive. It's a super important concept to understand. Um, now, how am I going to make sure that my answer is positive? Because sometimes when we subtract, we get positive answers. Sometimes when we subtract, we get negative answers. And there's a couple different ways. Um, you could, if you know what I'm talking about, use what's known as absolute value. Uh, when you do the absolute value, you might remember it doesn't matter um, if your answer is negative or positive. In the end, it comes out positive. So you could use that. Now, if you're like, I have no idea what Kate's talking about with absolute value, let's look at this a different way. One way to make sure your answer is always positive is to make sure the larger number comes first. And then you'll subtract, as we said, difference means subtract, the smaller number. That would ensure that you would get a positive answer. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So take a look at these two numbers. I have negative 3.7 and I have 4.9. Which one's larger? Well, of course, 4.9 is because uh, positive numbers are always larger than negative numbers. And then we're going to subtract. But be very, very careful. A lot of students make a very bad mistake right here. So let me just write this. This is a mistake. Don't you write this down. But a lot of students will then say, I'm going to subtract 3.7. What have they done wrong here? Well, 3.7 isn't the number that we're supposed to be subtracting. We're supposed to be subtracting the smaller number is negative 3.7. Now, I don't want to write negative, negative. That seems a little weird, right? Minus, minus, right in a row. So a lot of mathematicians will use a parentheses here. And that's why we end up with these double symbols. And you've probably seen them in your classes before. So this is 4.9 minus negative 3.7. Now I've directly translated this statement I've been given. What is the difference between negative 3.7 and 4.9? Okay, now what are we going to do with this? Now we have a problem. We actually can't do math. This math as it stands. We cannot subtract a negative number. We do something else instead. Some of you guys re might remember that subtracting a negative number Subtracting a negative number, we should make that a different color, shouldn't we? Oh, there we go. Subtracting a negative number is the same as addition. So let's rewrite this problem as an addition problem. So 4.9 minus negative 3.7 could be rewritten as 4.9 plus. Oh my goodness, I didn't mean to have that in red. Let's change that. Here we go, 4.9 plus 3.7. And now it's easy math. This isn't hard. You can um, line this up on the side of your paper if you're not sure um, how to do this. And I will give it a try. So I want to do a 4.9 plus 3.7. That is so hard to read, isn't it? What if I made my brush thicker? Here we go. Let's try that again. Let's do 4.9 plus 3.7. Now you might remember the most important thing when adding and subtracting decimals is to line up at the decimal place so that your ones add with your ones, ones with ones over here, sorry, your tenths add with your tenths. We can only add the same kind of thing. So here we go. 9 plus 7 is 16. 6 carry a 1 and we get 8 and my decimal drops straight down. And so... I have an answer now for over here. This is equal to 8.6. Now, if you did what most students do, you probably just subtracted without considering that negative sign and got 1.2. So watch out for that.